So there were William and Minnie Heckler, along with their kids, William Jr., Dorothea, Garland, Dale, and Virginia, if I recall. The house itself was a two-story house, and it was built right after the Civil War. And it was, it was, it was built in a farm style, farm classic kind of house. So in essence, seven members of the Heckler family live in that house for 10 years without any kind of problems. But they're all changed one day. And we're gonna talk about that one day. Uh, the fact that it's worth mentioning, and it will become very relevant later when we come to the theories, is that the house itself has a kind of very disturbing past. So, yeah. Let's go. It was April 19th, 1941, and it was a sunny, very warm kind of morning, when William was just like had breakfast with his family and he was getting ready to do some chores around the house. You know, some usual farmer's work. Things like that. And while he was preparing outside, he suddenly sensed like the burning smell, the burning sensation. And the problem was that he wasn't able to initially to locate where the smell is coming from. After some time, he established that the smell the burning smell is coming from the house, so he gets into the house and he stumbles uh, upon across his wife, who is on the stairs and was like, "Yo, bro, what's what's happening?" And yeah, he was like, "Can't you feel something? Something is actually burning inside of our house." And she <laughs> she was like, "No, I can't smell anything." So he, his wife, and their daughter Dorothy. Uh, go on to the second floor and they start searching because the second floor was the place where, where the smell was the most intense. And after some time, they established that even though on the first look nothing looked like it was burning, they established that the, the, the fire, the smoke is coming from inside of one of the walls. So the first logical logical response is to call the firefighters and when they arrive at the scene when they arrive at the scene they like strip that part of the wall hoping there is some kind of i don't know maybe hidden chimney or something that can you know explain what the hell is going on but when they strip the wall it was like nothing there just a small fire <laughs> which was burning by itself basically and the weird thing about it, and the weird thing about the entire house, is that it was a very old house. So there were like no electrical installments across the house. Just It was just like pure wood. And everybody was like, okay, man, that that's like <laughs> really weird. <laughs> what the hell is going on here? But they extinguished the fire and went back to the station. Now... Literally, as soon as they walked in the station, they receive a call. So it was Minnie on the other side of the line, and she was basically saying, you gotta get back here, because there is another fire. They arrive at a house, and what is happening now? The mattress is on fire. So, all by itself, the mattress starts, like, burning, and from inside, again, like the wall. So they extinguish mattress, but the hell is gonna break loose from that moment on. Right in front of their eyes, William's clothes started burning, all by itself. So they extinguished that as well, but as soon as they, you know, finish that, some furniture on the opposite side of the room, as well as book, started the same thing. But when I say book, I don't mean like the covers, so this is a really strange thing here, because one firefighter noticing was noticing that noticed sorry noticed that the smell the smoke is coming from inside of the book so when he opened the book the covers he found like individual pages burning and the weird thing is that for the next three hours there were a total of nine different fires which were appearing all across the house like on totally random stuff so lamps uh, drawers, uh, all kinds of things. 
And <laughs> this is some kind of funny situation because other firefighters from different, you know, like settlements came, rushed into helping them. And because the house, you know, can't host all the firefighters, the funny situation is that, that over 100 people were there and about 80% of them stood outside and was, you know, placed across different kind of uh, sections of the house and was just pointing directions where to go. So imagine this, the guys on the east, west, north and south, for example, and they're just saying, the guys from the east, the fire on the east, so they go east. The other ones say, hey, there's a fire here as well. So there were so many fires at the same time, they had to like give directions where to go. Now, the really strange fact about all this occurrence is that the fires were individual. So when I say that, I mean, for example, uh, if the fire started in some kind of draw, drawer of the nice stand, only the drawer were like, uh, was like burning and was damaged. So no other thing other than the thing that was burning was damaged at all. So it, it, remains ba it remained basically intact. And one lady, so uh, at that point, you know, the house, the entire house was burning and logically neighbors were like piling and selling, settling up to, you know, offer some help and things like that. And one lady actually witnessed when the curtains, you know, went up in flames. So uh, the strange thing about that is that the curtains literally burnt in half a second. So uh, something creepy is definitely at that point was going on there. That battle took almost 15 hours and was finished about 11 p.m. And like I said, over 100 firefighters were involved in extinguishing that fire. And they extinguished 28 fires that day in total. So 28 different random fires all across the house. So in a break between fires, uh, the Heckler family actually moved some of the furniture, I mean beds, outside because <laughs> Quite logically, at that point, the kids were like, uh, no, I'm not staying there, so I'm not sleeping there. And <laughs> I would do the same thing, I really don't bl blame them. Uh, and they actually slept outside of the house that night. Yeah, and I forgot to mention when the curtains are in play, one very strange situation happened when the lady was witnessing the, the burning of the curtains. So as soon as as one curtains burnt on the other side, as soon as, as you know, they were gone, the other ones on the completely opposite side of the house were inflamed. So it looked like like, like somebody switched the the switch, turned off the switch off, and turned them on on the other side of the house. So I uh, I don't know what's going on here, but it is definitely not. <laughs> anything normal at, at this point when everything was done the next day neighbors were logically you know still there willing to help and they began to you know develop theories of what could have happened and actually the outcome of the whole situation is that we will get into theories of course later that they demolished the house and basically moved to a different location away but they moved they didn't want to sleep there anymore and <laughs> really that was the only sane thing to do after all that happened because you know would you like to sleep in a house uh, which was the host of 28 separate fires during during one day i think not so before we move into theories, now comes the part when I said at the beginning that the house had a very disturbing kind of past. And I think this can be, to put it mildly, connected with some things in the theories. So here we go. So 
So the house was really old and it was built by a guy named Marshall Ketchum and he moved into that area uh, in the area of 1840, something like that, with his wife uh, Margaret and I think they actually built the house together. So by some accounts they had, and this is some kind of uh, confronting information because some sources say that they had two children and the others say they had more, like five. But for the sake of this entire video, let's just go with the, the second one, five. Now, in the 1880s, the family was struck with, to put it mildly, catastrophic tragedy. All their kids, one by one, started dying of disease called typhus. And this maybe sounds a little bit, a little bit idiotic, but if you type typhus in, into the Google tra uh, translate, <laughs> into the Google search, you will see that that disease is connected with the term burning fever. So coincidence? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Depending mostly on what you believe, but it is definitely a strange fact and we can all agree on that. Marshall died soon after that and after him Margaret as well. So the house was, you know, open on the market. And here comes the next family in play, Weekly family. The house was sold to a guy named Andrew Weekly, and he was some kind of a self-proclaimed spiritualist. And he moved into the house with his wife and two sons. So now we know there are two sons and that's it. So no five, no three, two. That's it. So he was some kind of spiritualist but with really shady and dark background. So he was not exactly the role model kind of dad. Maybe not dad, I mean maybe he was good dad to his sons, but he was not exactly the role model kind of neighbor or upstanding citizen, let's call him that. And unfortunately this family as well will experience some very very disturbing things. His two sons were actually, I don't know if they were amateurs or professional, but they were hunters and one day when they went into hunting, one of his sons actually got shot and accidentally killed. So Andrew was in very very deep state of grieving and just wouldn't, couldn't cope with all that. So it was rumored, and I think this is true, that because he was that kind of uh, spiritualist guy, he just, you know, couldn't let his son go. So he decided to bury him, literally, just a few feet away from the house, so he could continue to communicate with him in some sort of way. That's pretty disturbing, really. And But it's not the worst part. The worst part is that, and I don't know if this is true, but my research says it is, uh, he embedded some, ty some type of glass window onto a coffin, so he could see his son's face. So <laughs> I don't know how this would literally work in times. So he would just like, what, dig up the, the coffin and then look at that body of his son. I don't really know, but <sighs> Jesus, it's disturbing. So let's just move on. He was so in grief that he soon after died. And after he died, it was rumored that his wife actually said, okay, now it's enough, and moved the coffin uh, to the cemetery. And that was the end of the Weekly family. So now when we established that the house has <laughs> like really dark energy and dark past to it, now we can finally move to the theories what the hell could have happened with this house and with all the fires and the Hackler family. Let's try to scramble something up. Let's go. Before I move into theories, I want to just give a couple of, uh, you can call it honorable mentions, right? And I would like to, you know, exclude one thing at the beginning. So it's a theory that the whole thing was like insurance fraud. So I don't know who came up with this theory, but obviously this person, you know, just didn't think about it. So 
how can you how can you actually fool the insurance company if there is like 150 people around the house at the same time and they saw with their own eyes that the fires like you know starting started itself by itself 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 yeah that's the plural uh, do you want me? Uh, do, do you want me to think that 200 people were in, involved in insurance fraud scam? I mean, really, man. Whoever came up with this theory, stop it, stop it. Don't do it anymore. Honorable mention number one is involvement of lightning strikes. So it's some kind of uh, you know bad weather, and the theory goes that it was so bad the night before that the lighting like struck several times and maybe like heated or you know struck direct directly into some uh, nails or something metal that night evening that could you know project it the next day and with the help of uh, weather conditions that day you know the rest I'm not really convinced and sure about that, nor am I good of, uh, I guess, that's go that goes into the field of uh, geography or something. Yep. The next one goes into the existence of some kind of big magnetic field that house was built on. So, again, I cannot really discuss this because <laughs> I'm, I'm not uh, not experienced in this fields both fields so if there is any of my audience that knows something about magnetic fields and lightings please indulge me enlighten me in the comments and all of us so let's move on to the things i can actually say something about and just to, just so you think that i'm not a total waste of your uh, tax money in law enforcement i mean i'm a guy who didn't solve any case in his entire career so <laughs> i guess you just pay me for nothing theory number one obviously this has to be mentioned when we take into consideration the dark past of the house itself and the couple of neighbors also made some kind of comments that when they were like witnessing the whole thing that the devil himself lives in that house and like if i didn't witness this i would never believe it so i guess <laughs> i could say the same thing but since i'm the guy and i'm not judging anyone i'm talking about me personally i'm the guy that like his facts his facts straight so and as real as possible so it's hard for me to imagine that some kind of ghost was you know just there and was having fun with the whole thing so he was like going from place to place and lighting little fire fires and was laughing at the people so maybe he just you know put his camera recorder on and you know he was lighting the the, the, the um, book and then he was lighting the curtains and so on and so on so actually there is obviously when these theories are in question there there cannot be any kind of proof so they can, that can, uh, only speculation can be involved here and Willem himself said actually said when he was asked do you feel anything how do you feel about this you know paranormal paranormal involvement here he said basically i'm not spook, uh, spooked i'm just afraid to live in a house when the fire can you know flame up every minute basically and the roof can crash on me and my family and we could all die so i agree with that man 100 percent for that same reasons i couldn't stay there as well so yeah paranormal I just can't say that word, man, for, for some reason. Paranormal. I, I gotta say it really slow, or, or otherwise I would, in 90% of time, say it wrong. So, like, my tongue is just stuck. So, paranormal involvement. Theory number one. Let me know what you think about it. Let's go to the second one. Alright, so as we're moving forward, the theories get more and more you know 
plausible. So by some information from the neighbors, there was some kind of well. I hope that is the word, you know, the thing when where the, the water is stored, so deep, the well or weld. Welding is, you know what I mean. So, and that thing projected some kind of gas. Uh, by some, you know, logical conclusions and thinking, that gas, if, if it was a natural gas, could have like been soaked into the curtains and into the walls, you know, because they were out of wood. And one thing that, you know, is worth mentioning is the fact that I think, I mean, I did some kind of research, but I'm not sure, correct me if I'm wrong, natural gas has no other odor whatsoever. So they actually put what you sense in your house or anywhere where, when uh, gas is leaking, what you sense is like artificially added flavor, flavor, I guess we can call it. So so uh you could you could notice right so <laughs> if you could not notice that would mean that <laughs> was something very dangerous around you and you know not good not good at all so basically that gas with a combination of uh weather conditions that day it was very hot like i said could have again hidden up some some bolts some nails into the house and it could have project some kind of spark or something um, that could uh, initially start a fire, but that does not explain how 28 different separate fires, you know, on different kind of things started that day in the house. So I could understand the wall, for example, when there are na nails and other kinds of small metals, but for example, if we take the book, I mean, the book was in the drawer, in the nightstand, there were not any kind of nails and bolts into that book and the pages like started burning so i don't know how to connect the gas with that but if you have something let me know the next one is really interesting one number three Now, actually, I found this one after all the theories and I decided to place it on number three because by some possibility ranks or something, I mean, it could happen. So, linseed oil and yeah, I mean, it sounds harmless, but actually, if you do some research, it's like, it's very, very not harmless stuff at all. So, and it's used like a household item in many homes across the world, basically, if I'm not wrong. And I hope I'm not because I have to be some right about something, man. Uh, linseed oil, by some uh, research, was like a very common thing in that era, in that period. So, if we remember, there was like 1941 and it was, you know, still World uh, War II ongoing. So, a little action right there uh it was a usual uh household item for uh, for farms so what this theory says that is it is possible that someone used and it, and lithium oil is used <sighs> i messed this up i don't i'm i uh, let's just <laughs> start over <laughs> So linseed oil is used to, you know, coat wood, as far as I understood. Uh, and if used correctly, it doesn't impose any danger at all. So basically what it does when it presents a danger is when, I mean, I, I could call puddles. So for example, you take a rug or um, some kind of fabric material, right? and you soaked it with that oil and you just leave it folded in some kind of bucket or something and that is not a good thing. So when, when you coat the wood and you like smear it all over it, then it's, it's fine, it's okay. But when you do, like I said, fold it and leave it just like that, then it presents a threat. And you can actually find 
a decent number of videos on YouTube about the people who had like their entire houses burned to the ground because because of that very thing. So they didn't dried their their rugs and whatever the materials they they used, uh, which were soaked with linseed oil, and they experienced you know fire inflaming really fast and i think like very very low temperature is needed in order to to that reaction to, to you know to create that reaction but i don't know it's it's interesting it's not that possible because obviously there are still very very different materials here when this house is in question that were burning so obviously you cannot coat the book with the oil but I mean it, it somebody with the oily hands could have you know touched the pages or something and maybe the curtains I uh, I really don't know but it is possibility it is not likely but it is worth mentioning and what's more important uh, it is worth mentioning that if you have linseed oil in your house you better watch how you use it because <laughs> your house god forbid could end up just like the house in Odin so let's hope that it doesn't happen now let's move on to the final one now this one in my mind in my opinion seems like the most possible one because i cannot like credit some ghost that goes around the house and starts little fires. I cannot credit a gas leak to go into the book and <laughs> inflames it. And I cannot credit uh, folded rugs all over the house for the, the cause of the fire. But what I do can credit is something called spontaneous combusting. And if you guys didn't hear about, I'm sure once in your lifetime you came across a footage of, you know, s some interesting article that said they said human co combustion and that some lady or some guy burnt basically his body burnt by itself, and there were like some kind of feet there on the uh, chair was empty and only his feet were like there. I'm sure you've seen that picture. I'm I'm gonna try to find it and present it to you so you can maybe remember. Anyway, if you didn't heard already about spontaneous combustion, it is basically occurrence of fire without the application of external heat source, so or amplifier, such as you know fuel, kerosene maybe or gas. So it's <laughs> like really natural, natural stuff. I think I just ma made up one word, natural. Uh, good for me, man. However, this theory has some, you know, holes and downsides as well, because obviously not all things can do that. I mean, this pencil can not just spontaneously combust from nothing, you know. So you have to have like some kind of uh, chosen materials in order for that to happen. And some of that materials are uh, rags, towels with uh, oil residue, paint spray, I mean paint, paint spray, I don't know the word for it in the rest of the world, but you know, the thing that you coat the wood as final touch to, to make it shiny. I know, I know, you know what I mean, so that. And here is also another thing. This is a time when a particular chemical element comes into play. What? One particular element comes to mind. Ah, liar. So, like Jesse Pinkman, I obviously didn't pay enough attention in my uh, chemistry classes, so I don't know how many branches of nitrate actually exist, but I'm hoping you guys know what I mean. So, basically, this compound is some of it, I mean, some of them, because there are so many, are very, very flammable and many things you know you see in your household or similar 
more in the past times, like this era here, uh, used this specific element as part of uh, you know processes in making some kind of uh, thing. For example, nitrate is used in you know movie films, so in that film tapes. In essence, nitrate is also used you know again it coating in coating wood and that would explain the fire from the walls in the walls some part of it uh, is used when you know ink is in question so this is getting really interesting now because the calendar that burnt maybe had some sort of ink that was imprinted on it that contained this nitrate also the book if you think about it the covers didn't burn at all so they, they were undamaged only the pages again with which were maybe printed with ink that contained nitrate burned separately so it is used uh, again in various uh, items uh, as part of, of uh, making them such as maybe uh, not maybe but for sure lamps and also there were lamps on the list of things that burnt as well so <sighs> i really think that spontaneous but you know you know what's the problem even if i think there is the possibility that still doesn't explain you know <laughs> why would 28 separate fires just out of nowhere appear that is the part that doesn't give me rest and I cannot arrest anybody because of that fact but and logical question would be why it just didn't you know continue to happen so why it happened only once why it didn't happen before why because you know when on that day April 19th when th this happened so that was it that is the part I'm trying to figure out. So as much as I like to you know, lean on these realistic possibilities here, bro, I don't. I really don't know. It, it is a square one. I mean, my go, my vote goes to the spontaneous combustion. But again, it has holes in it. It has downsides. You know, it, it's not 100% like nothing in this world. Sure. So. I think I really want to hear your side of this whole story. So all in all, it was a very interesting case. So the lucky circumstance is that nobody died, nobody was injured, and the house actually wasn't uh, burned to the ground. So it was still livable, let's just say that. But for obvious reasons, the Heckler family just didn't want to live there anymore. And because of its dark past, they just decided it is better to you know crush it till the end and they moved on with their lives like always thank you for watching and see you in the new one goodbye